We've all seen some pretty horrendous stuff on YouTube, but what exactly is happening on other social media platforms? And what does that say about the need for crypto? Let's talk about it. Welcome to Lake and Crypto. My name is Josh, and I'm here to help you find digital liberty in the complex world of crypto. Remember that anything you hear in any of my videos is not to be taken as financial advice. Do your own research and own your own decisions. So I've been doing more of these reaction videos on this channel, and they've been going pretty well, but I want to experiment a little bit with it and try a slightly different format. Today, we're branching out a little bit and reacting to some short form content on Instagram, because that's mostly what the kids are watching these days, but is there anything of quality out there? Let's find out. I feel like I'm going to be sick. I just, like, looked through my Walmart history, and I found this, like, um, Walmart order from two years ago for the whole month worth of groceries. 45 items cost $126. A whole month of groceries just for me, basically. But... I did notice this reorder all button, and I wanted to see how much it would cost now. Now, this order of 45 items for one month would have cost $414. That is four times more. How the fuck? How? Like, what? Welcome to the world of government-owned money. Make no mistake, this is 100% an issue of governments printing money and then spending all of that money on garbage government programs and dumping ridiculous amounts uh, into the circulating supply. It is legitimately astounding to me that people try to blame it on anything else. Someone that's less informed on economic issues might ask, why don't businesses just choose not to raise their prices and all of the prices will just stay stable across the board, but it doesn't work like that. Depending on where governments choose to spend that newly printed money, that there are some areas of the economy where prices have to go up. There isn't a choice, otherwise the business might not become sustainable. When that happens, the inflation doesn't just stay isolated in a certain area. It goes all the way up the supply chain until it affects just about everybody. The single most reliable way to drive inflation is to print money. And all it takes is the government to just unload a dump truck of money into one particular industry, and then they have to raise their prices because expenses increase. And that affects everybody up the supply chain. And the people that benefit most from this are the people that get their hands on that newly printed money first. So there's no negative incentive for these people to stop printing money. This is why we need crypto. In 1983, making $30,000 a year is equivalent to 2024, making $164,000 a year. So our parents grew up comfortably on $30,000 a year, very comfortably. And we have to make $164,000 a year just to live the same way that our parents lived in 1983. I think that stat really shows how much inflation has impacted everyone. And it makes a lot of sense now why no one can afford shit. Because making $30,000 a year in 1983 was sufficient because eggs were like 50 cents. And now it's like $9 for a can of 12. So although the price of everything in your life has gone up car insurance rent groceries wages have not and that's a huge problem because now 90 percent of people are living paycheck to paycheck in the u.s and that stat really puts it into perspective he is very angry i i think he has every right to be because obviously he's a hundred percent right on the state of the economy today and how the economy has devolved over the past 40 really 50 years but there's one issue that I raised with this video, which is where he says that wages have not kept up with inflation, which incorrectly assumes that it is the responsibility of American businesses to manage or keep up with inflation or any other business in any other impacted country. Businesses do not magically have more money when inflation hits. If anything, they have less money. 
Remember what we said about prices rising all the way up through the supply chain. The expenses hit first. So really, businesses don't have any more money until they raise their prices and they actually start generating revenue from that. But 100% of the time, that increase in prices is in an effort to offset the cost of increased expenses. If you're trying to keep up with wages, that's just another additional expense that you're trying to keep up with, so they have to raise their prices even more if they're trying to keep up with that inflation, which again, goes way up the supply chain. I don't know where this idea came from that inflation is just a natural, inevitable part of economic law, and that deflation is inherently a bad thing. It's absolutely not true. Businesses are as much victims of inflation as individuals are, sometimes more so. It is massively unproductive to blame businesses for inflation, and I think it was John Stuart Mill that said that the most effective way to curb inflation is to cut government spending and stop printing money. This is why I am unbelievably excited that the Argentina government announced that they were going to stop printing money in order to fuel their economy. We will finally have a case study to demonstrate the damage of money printing. And in the process, I think it will also prove the superiority of Austrian economics and why we need crypto. Isn't that crazy? It's not wild though that taxes are like a subscription to the country that you live in, except you can never cancel, no matter how dissatisfied you are. That's crazy. It is unbelievably crazy, you have no idea. In the US, Taxes were never really supposed to be a permanent part of the US economic system. They were supposed to be a temporary measure that was implemented to help fund the Civil War. And now, governments are just printing money like crazy, like it's crystal meth or something. I know people outside of crypto think that we crypto nerds are crazy when we say crap like, oh, Bitcoin can stop wars from happening. But legitimately, it's, it's actually true when you think about how governments are able to fund wars and how taking that power away from them would make it so that they can't do it anymore. If they can't endlessly print money into oblivion, then they will manage that money a heck of a lot more responsibly. They will get into less wars, and presumably, they will need to tax us less. Cardano, does it have a future? Many people are asking me that, and I think ADA, which is a token symbol, doesn't stand a chance. Here's why. Well, we have Solana, right? People are building on Solana. We have base. People are building on base because, you know, it's cheaper fees and it's compatible with Ethereum. Cardano is not compatible with Ethereum and there's no real reason to build on that. Can you name one? If you can, I'd like to hear it. Uh, let's see, superior security, superior uptime, higher levels of decentralization in every meaningful metric. The strongest community in the industry verified by third-party research versus other ecosystems that are regularly accused of 90% of their transactions being completely fake. And it's also such a dumb argument that there's no future on Cardano because Base and Solana exists. Why does nobody stop and ask why Cardano is the only major blockchain that is actively and regularly making partnerships with governments around the world? And that's probably because Cardano is the only one that's actually putting any significant efforts into putting real recognized functionality into DID solutions, which allows blockchain to tap into things like 401ks and other retirement accounts, tourism and healthcare. That's literally like a $50 trillion advantage, but okay, Cardano doesn't have a future. It's unbelievable to me that this guy has almost a million followers on Instagram. I I'm gonna see what else this guy has to say. This person commented, what about the founder of Cardano? Is he very important to the crypto world? Should we believe in his project or sell his project for BTC? Come here. I believe Cardano is a good project and will do well in the future it will not do as well as Bitcoin or Ethereum. So you should uh, own some Cardano because, you know, there will be pumps, but it may not last the, the ages. That's just the way it is. It's not, uh, and not as innovative as they think it is. 
Wow, uh, this guy might be full of the worst possible takes that you could have in crypto. And that's legitimately not from an Ada maximalist thing. I don't consider myself a Cardano maximalist, but just coming from a standpoint of basic understandings of market fundamentals. Ethereum, at the time of recording this video, is sitting at a $372 billion market cap, and Bitcoin is sitting at a $1 trillion market cap, while Cardano is sitting at a $12 billion market cap. It would be incomprehensively easier for Cardano to do a 10x than it would for Ethereum to do even a, a 3 or 4x. And that's not even including fundamentals analysis. You could literally swap out ADA with Dogecoin and you could make exactly the same case. But if you were to look at the fundamentals, Ethereum has been trying to follow what Cardano has been doing for like the past three years now, uh, they switched to proof of stake and it's still not as good as Cardano's proof of stake mechanism. Though to be fair, nobody's is. Cardano is also the only blockchain that has been around for 40 years or more that has never had anything that could be considered an outage. Ethereum has had two instances of such extreme congestion that transactions could not be processed on the chain and Bitcoin has actually gone down twice. Cardano has never gone down. It had one instance of extreme congestion, but transactions could still be processed. They were just happening a little bit slower. And it's had one failed DDoS attack in recent months. I don't know what this guy makes his decisions on. I guess it's easy to get away with not justifying yourself when you're making 60 second videos on Instagram. But I think that this guy could benefit from a crypto for beginners course. Anyways, let me know what you think of this video. Like I said in the beginning, I'm experimenting with different kinds of reaction content, so I want to know, do you like this kind of content? Do you want to see more? Or do you prefer reaction videos to longer form content like what we've done on this channel before? Or are you leaving your favorite emoji down there to help with the engagement? Let me know. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss any of my Cardano-based content every Tuesday and Thursday. As always, remember never to invest more than what you can afford to lose. Learn as much as you can about this space and play for the late game. Thanks so much for watching.